spelled. There you go. All right. Okay. Um, thanks everybody for coming to Wednesday night chatter. Uh, tonight we are going to have a special guest, Miss Mary Sarah. Um, she is awesome. She knows so much stuff. Uh, Monica and I just recently met her and we loved her instantly because she has all the goods. Honestly, she knows so much about project broadcast. She knows so much about boards. She knows about Bisley. She knows about Squee. So if you need all the deets on any of those things, she is your go-to girl. Um, she really like went down the rabbit hole on all those things on us recently with a training. And I learned so much from her. I learned things I had no idea how that even was possible in any of these programs. And it really like lit a fire under me and made me really want to get to know all these programs a lot better. Except for Visley. I'm not a super big Visley, Visley fan, but um I especially like wanted to nerd out on boards and project broadcasts after training with her. Um, but one of the things that she told us she's really great about is compliance. And I would say as a leader, like one of the things that I'm asked the most about is compliance. And that is something that I really struggle with because, you know, with how often social media changes and how often um, rules and things change. And with Cincy, you know, having so many partnerships with licensed companies, um, I, we have to constantly kind of um, change our compliance rules to fit within those social media aspects, you know, um, as Facebook changes things like, um, let's say marketplace, and they add things like instant buy and things, then compliance has to totally change things to even fit within those realms, you know, and so I feel like even as a leader, even though I try my best to keep up with compliance, um, I, I still struggle with it. And that's something that I, I have a hard time training on. Um, so I, we asked Mary Terry if she would please come in and talk about compliance with us tonight. So I'm gonna give her um, the floor, the virtual floor, and she can, <laughs> she can tell us all about compliance. Thank you, darling. All right, so hi guys, my name is Mary Sarah. Um, you can call me Mary, you can call me Mary Sarah. You can call me Sarah, just please don't call me any bad names because I will mute you. Um, so I actually started a little bit about me. I started uh, Sensi a couple of years ago. I started out with just the idea of helping a friend out. And long story short, two years later, I have changed my way of doing things. And I'm now doing Sensi full time and everything else part-time, um, if you can call what I do part-time. Anyway, um, one my background though, uh, before, before Sensi was very much into compliance. It was, um, I am actually a national certified director of safety with the Department of Transportation. What that means is I literally go into a trucking company and I tell them that they're out of compliance and they need to fix their stuff. And I hand them big dollar sign bills and I make grown men cry. It's one of the best things in my life. Um, and I'm not a man hater. I have a wonderful husband. And, but, you know, it's always fun to watch grown men cry. Let's be honest. Um, so when Sensi, when I joined Sensi and I saw that they had on our workstation, this entire thing about compliance, I was like, ooh. Okay, like that's what like drew my interest, where everybody else draws their interest for different things, whether it's, you know, the products or the camaraderie or whatever, it was the compliance that drew my attention. And with that came truly understanding the black and white, because that's really what compliance is, is black and white. And even though we are constantly changing and saying, we can do this at this moment. Oh, we know we can do this at this moment. It really is black and white and that doesn't change. So one of the big things that I see, and I love you guys dearly because I see you guys posting on Facebook and posting this and posting that is your guys's flyers that you guys create, your pictures you create and they're not in compliance. And I, and I hate that because there are people in the world that are not going to come to you and say, hey, Crystal, um, your, your image isn't in compliance. They're just automatically going to go to the compliance department and say, Crystal didn't do it right. And I hate that because look, if you don't want to be tattled on, don't do the tattling. Okay. Come to the person. They might not know. You might not realize that you can't alter an image. 
For example, if you ever go on your workstation, and oh, by the way, I talk with my hands a lot. So I apologize for that now. If you ever go on your workstation and you go into the marketing, um, you will see a lot of times for things for LTOs. So um, your LTOs, just this month we had Scooby-Doo, we had Alice in Wonderland, we had um, the NFL stuff, okay? To name the, like, the last three that are coming off my head top of my head. We had the Cinderella castles on Monday. Okay. Guys, the images that are put up there, unless you already own that, that product, you cannot, it, you cannot alter it. And what I mean by altering is you cannot add words to the images. You cannot add, you know, come get this written on it. You can't put independent sensing consultant on it. You can't put your name on it. Like literally the, the image that they created, the flyer they created for us, you have to put up. But if you look behind me, you see I have different things. Like I have the genie and I have Tigger and Pooh and Mickey Mouse and Kermit the Frog. I have all of this, okay guys? So a lot of times when you see an image I create, whether it's on Canva or it's through Visly or it's through whatever, I have already done, I already have the product, okay? Because I've been in it a little while. Or I'll have a friend who has it and I'll be like, hey, can you take a picture of that and send it to me real quick? Because it's already in person. Now, one of the things that you're gonna hear a lot of people say is you can't remove the background. That's not true because, and this is where compliance comes in, you in direct, with the direct selling association, you cannot be advertising another company. And we, a lot of people get away, like don't think about that with compliance. For example, if you have Mary Kay, and I'm just showing this because it's right here. If you have a Mary Kay lipstick and you take a picture of the, this bathroom cleaner, you can't be showing the Mary Kay. And so removing backgrounds is okay, but you cannot remove a background if it's not a flyer that you're creating. Does I hope that makes sense. Um, so I see a lot of this with you guys. And the way I can tell is, you guys always forget to remove the little branding <laughs> where it says like Warner Brothers TM. Guys, like I'm going to call you out on it, but I'm going to do it in a way that makes like I'll, I'll take your image and recreate it and make it within compliance for you guys and I'll send it to you um, because a lot of people don't understand. And, you know, I... I feel bad because this is not something we teach anymore. We don't teach about working within compliance. So I wanted to talk to you guys about that, about your flyers, because I love you guys dearly, but some of your flyers really not needed to like do that, that shift. Um, compliance is really hard because there's so many rules. For example, social media posts. How many of us have wanted to post something and be like, hey, this is $50, get it. Like a 10 bar wax special, right? You're like, hey, it's it's 50 bucks. But you're like, but you can't. And the reason why you can't is because it's considered a personal special. Even though, let's be real guys, okay? It really isn't a personal special because when you actually do the math, you're just doing it smart like you're bundling everything that's the lowdown of a of the 10 bar special is you're doing a six bar you're doing a three bar you're doing a single bar and you do it and add the tax and the shipping guys it, it's nothing special okay but the way we do it and the way we're like oh we'll do it in a party yes you can do that okay but i just want to talk to you guys about that because what I see a lot of times people are doing is they're literally not put like they're they're getting away from the idea of how to how to post things. And so you have to do things in a one-to-one -one if it's considered a personal special. Guys, one-to-one -one is doing it in a Facebook message, not a group Facebook message, but a just a single one. So like me sending Crystal or Monica a single message and saying, hey, here you go. 
I have this available. Would you be interested? Sending it in a text message, in an email. Now, let's be real, guys. Okay. Facebook is social media. And technically, and to be in compliance, you cannot do a, a broadcast message. And that's what it's called, where you're broadcasting to the world. Okay. But then we have something like, project broadcast and everybody's like but i'm i'm scheduling it and i'm sending it to like all my customers at the, at one time you're right but the difference between doing it on project broadcast and doing it on social media nobody knows on project broadcast who's getting it okay let me just say that again nobody knows who you're sending the messages to when you're doing it on project broadcast, when you schedule a message and you send it to somebody, Crystal doesn't know that I sent it to Monica and Monica doesn't know I sent it to Crystal. So that's why that's allowed. And a lot of people are like, oh, but that, no, no, no. Stop and think. Nobody knows. So it's going out as an individual message. Now, project broadcast has this new platform that if you're on project broadcast, you have a thing called spaces. And you can add people into that, into a spaces group. And you can literally, it's very much like Facebook groups, but not. And I say not because those that are on spaces have to have project broadcast. So Tom, Dick, and Harry can't join your spaces group because Sally Joe is a prod, you know, because they don't have project broadcast, but Sally Jo can because she has project broadcast. So there's that fine line of what is considered compliance and not compliance with the spaces group. I'm going to put it to you this way. If you think something is wrong, don't do it. Best advice I can ever give you when it comes to compliance. If you think it is wrong, don't do it. If it sounds salesy, don't do it. Because you could get yourself into trouble and you're not going to have somebody like Monica or Crystal or me that will come up to you and be like, hey, you can't post that. And some, and I'm going to be straight up honest, guys, you're going to see superstar directors, star directors, directors. You're going to see all of those, you know, that top, 5% of the company posting things and they're out of compliance. So if you ever have a question, come to us, ask us. I am the first person. I have one girl. I love her to death. She literally sits there and copies everything I post because she knows it's all in compliance and she doesn't have to think. But I have another one who every time she posts, she'll literally take my image and post her words and her words make her out of compliance. You can have words that are in compliance and an image out of compliance. So to be understanding, go to your market, go into your workstation, type in under training the word compliance. You're going to get an entire compliance guide. It's like 50 something pages long. And there's a whole lot of legal language that is dry. We'll put you to sleep. If you need somebody to put you to sleep, read that. Within the first two pages, you're going to sleep, okay? At the same time, I use it, and I actually have a, on my phone, okay, which you can't see, but I have on boards, and I know Monica and Crystal and I, um, they're on my board, and you can join my board too, but I actually have a spot in here that has all the compliance guide, and I highlight the important things that you need to know. So all you have to do is literally go in and be like, okay, I need this part and I need this part and I need this part because I try and dumb it down. And I say that with all the love in the world to you guys, I try and dumb down compliance because there's a whole lot to it. When you do do compliance, do do. Every time I say that, I laugh, do do. <laughs> um, sorry, <laughs> brand of, okay, mind you, I have 14 grandchildren and they've all been here over the last month. So I am like, my mind is still in 14 year old boy mode. Okay. So forgive me on that. Um, and if you have boys, you understand. Um, but I will tell you that I forget where I'm going. Crystal, where was I going with this? I have no idea where I was going with this. 
this is um, compliance saved in boards. You highlight it. That yes. Was the last thing you said. So thank you. So mm -hmm. I I make it really easy for you guys to understand, and I break it down for you guys, and I make sure that things are done so you guys can understand because when you're doing compliance, you and I keep and I'm gonna keep repeating myself over and over and over again. And I know this and I say it in like 900 different ways, but guys, I gotta tell you, um, I hope I just get through to you guys that you have to make sure you're in compliance with everything. For example, did you guys know you cannot have a can of Coca-Cola and a can of Pepsi in the same image? Because that makes it out of, yes, my squirrel brain. Tara, okay, so to, guys, Tara is from my team. Um, I love her to death. She knows me and my bouncing red ball and my squirrely brain, sorry. Um, but I will tell you guys that, that that's my biggest thing is you guys like cannot ha have things because it's called trademark infringement. So pay attention to that stuff. All right. So I really tried to keep that really quick. And I know I didn't even go into like 90% of the rules and regulations and compliance issues that I could possibly do because I could talk for like eight hours on this. What questions do you guys have? Like, seriously, like read the questions. I, I got to chat up so I can read your questions. What questions do you guys have? I know there has to be a question from somebody because I know I did not go through half of what I should have. Um, I have a question. So okay. um, where I get kind of confused was I see people, mind you, it's mostly superstar directors, um, but I see people posting things that, um, and almost always there's an argument, at least in the director's group, about what's allowed and what's not. But let's say, for example, you have the Harry Potter Hogwarts warmer, right? Okay. And then in the background, you have Harry Potter pictures and Harry Potter other stuff that's not part of Sensi on display. I see a lot of conflict on that, on whether that is out of compliance or not. And I think that's where I get super confused because people are saying, no, you can't, you can't have like, let's say Looney Tunes in the background or um, Disney in right. the background, right? Even if it's Sensi, you can't have that in the background because it's two different licensings. But then right. people are saying that you can't have even just anything that's like Harry Potter in the background, um, which I don't understand that because it's not Sensi and it's still Harry Potter. So I guess I get confused on what's allowed on that and what's not. Okay, so that's actually a really good point because I know there is a, there's three superstar directors who recently posted something about that. Um, so we are licensed for Harry Potter for the items that we're allowed to use. And Harry Potter stuff is actually through Warner Brothers, okay? So Warner Brothers says you can do the castle, you can do Hedwig, you could do the bars of wax, you can use those, the names, you can do that, okay? But they did not give Sensi the right, which technically we represent Sensi, they did not give us the right to be able to use all Harry Potter. They only give us the right to use certain things. And that's why when you're doing your images and you're creating stuff, you like when that the castle came out last year or the beginning of this year, whenever it was, and people were like, oh, do you have images and can, you know, do this and let's have a Harry Potter wizarding game or party. Technically, we couldn't because we were not given the access to that. We are given the access to use the certain names of products, but we were not given the access to all of Harry Potter. So like, let's say we had a display, we couldn't put something like a, like a snitch or something on there that we don't right. have any products of. Okay. Correct. But, but if I have, uh, see, I just, I get myself all like weirded out. I just prefer to skip all of that just in case I do something wonky and weird. You know what I mean? Like I don't. Yes. That's, that's where I get kind of um, nervous. I know, and I tell my team all the time, uh, compliance isn't just going to come and take your business away from you for doing one simple thing. But when it comes to licensing, that's where you have to be super careful because 
you know, you can literally lose everything. Yeah. And so when I, when I, I say, you know, compliance is one thing, but like licensing compliance is a whole nother thing because as a, as a company, if Sensi were to lose our partnership with Warner brothers or Disney, that's, that's millions of dollars for us and yeah. uh, revenue and all of our future licensing, no LTO releases, none of that would be there to drive our sales, you know, um, yes. but like regular compliance, I always say, you know, don't be afraid, reach out if you're not sure. And so that's what I do. If I am, if I'm really wanting to use something, um, then I, and I'm like, oh, this is something I really want to use. Then I always contact compliance. Don't be afraid to message them and say, is this out of compliance or is this okay to use? And they're yes. really good about getting back to you about that. Um, the only thing I will interrupt with compliance, you can ask five different people and they will give you five different answers, but it's actually all the same answer. It's super hard. I feel like um, I always tell them if you're not sure and you contact compliance, save your interaction with compliance in case in the future somebody else says, hey, that's out of compliance and you do get in trouble for it. At least you have the record of saying I did contact compliance and they said it was OK or whatever, you know, like kind of cover your own tracks when it comes to that. Yes. Um and then I saw Tammy says, uh, I saw a training. They said, if you have the products and they are at, and they are your personal, we also have other products in the background and I'm trying, she's trying to find what she saw now. Okay, yeah, that's so, what I was talking about. Yeah. So that's what we were just talking about, Tammy. If they're your own personal products, take a picture, erase the background, do what you got to do. Like have fun. Okay. Yeah. I will get Priscilla. You're, I got you. I'll ask you a question next. Um, go ahead and do what you got to do. Like take a picture. And that's why there was an image back in June or July that I did. Um, it was actually July and it was uh, the last chance. And because we had some of these buddies that were up on last chance, they were in the clearance section and stuff like that. And I will tell you guys, um, I erased everything else around it. And somebody had asked me, well, that's out of compliance. You can't do that. Technically, I had to because I can't have the genies. Now, a live video like this, you see my background, it's not a big deal. But I can't take a picture and have a genie sitting next to a Winnie the Pooh or a Tigger or an Eeyore or, you know, whatever. Like, I can't do that. If it's non, if it's two different LTOs, you can definitely have it in, not a big deal. But reality is, guys, you can't. Just erase everything around you. If you need help erasing, give me the picture or Monica or Crystal, and we'll go into Canva and we can erase. I use Canva, at least. I don't know what everybody else uses. I use Canva and I just erase backgrounds. Like I can get it all, all the way down, but I have to see that it's a personal picture. Like it can't be somebody else. Um, Anne says, if we use unaltered pictures from marketing pages, we will be okay, right? Yes, 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 yes. It, when in doubt, use marketing pictures. You will never go wrong. You will never be out of compliance on flyers or images if you use that. Just don't alter them by any means. Don't write words on them. Don't do anything. Just save the picture and go about. Um, okay, so Priscilla, what was your question? Um, I was actually gonna ask something similar like Crystal with the Harry Potter, it's actually a few of them. Um, so I know that we have the wax bars where it's the Hogwarts houses. So it, yeah. does, it does it mean that it's out of compliance if I'm, if I have like, I have a um, Hufflepuff coffee mug and you I cannot use it coffee mug next to my warmer. I can't do that's considered out of compliance. Yes. Even though it's still Hufflepuff. Yes. Okay. Because, and because we don't have a licensed right to be able to use the Hufflepuff coffee mug. Okay. You can do the wax bar, but you can't do the coffee coffee mug okay now and then you said that two different licensed products like I know I took a picture showing was it um 
who was it? Uh, I think it was Bugs Bunny and um, Kermit the Frog or something like that. And I took a picture and I had them together, like one on one side of my head, one on the other side of my head and was like, look what's in Clarence. You cannot do that. Oh, wow. Because they're two, they're consent because one is Looney Tunes, which is Warner Brother, right? Right. The other one is Warner Brother, but not Looney Tunes. It's Sesame Street. It's Disney. Yeah. It's, it's like separate you licensing. Yeah. Yeah. To right. Two totally different licensing. You cannot have like, I'm technically... I, and I like how Bam Bam and Pebbles, I don't know. I don't know what your real name is, Bam Bam and Pebbles. Jen. But, <laughs> Jen. <laughs> That's Jen. Um, but I will say, like, technically, if you were to take a picture of me, I would be out of compliance. Because I have all of this. Now, I'm on video screen, so it's a little different. And we can always remove the video and nobody would ever see it. But reality is, I'm technically out of compliance because I have... Jeannie and Winnie the Pooh and Tigger. So yes, um, Jacqueline, said, yeah. you're right. If you're posting about two different LTOs, um, you cannot put them in a single post. They have to be two separate posts. Even if they're um, Disney and they're all Disney, you have to separate them all out technically. Yeah. But yeah. Danielle, what, you're welcome. Hi, Jen. <laughs> I love that. Danielle, what's your question? Okay, I just kind of want to add to what y'all are talking about. Um, so my understanding is if you have your own personal product you bought, for instance, okay, we're going to go with the Wally Warmer, and you have just like a solid background, no nothing behind it, and you have like a little Wally mini figurine you want to kind of put beside it just to kind of show it, that's out of compliance, something like that, correct? Right. Correct. Okay. Um, so you can't, and you were saying too that you can't, um, you can't show like Wally and Eva together, or would they count as in compliance? If if we have Eva, and you have Wally, we have the Eva buddy. Yeah, they have the Eva buddy, and then like the Wally warmer. What if you show those together? Like you know, are they, I, okay. Hair. I'm gonna be honest. I don't know who Wally is or Eva, so I don't they're, know. They're, they're from the. They're from the same, so you can. Yeah, you yeah. can show. If those they're together. from the same group, you mm -hmm. can always put them in the same post. Yeah, like if they're okay, released so together cool. as the same collection, you can put them together. But I can't put like Tigger and wally or you know what i mean like i can't do right. even if they're in right the same yeah, kinda, Disney. yeah i got what she was saying with that yeah. i was just wondering about like what you because i think crystal you mentioned the mug thing so like just because like let's say there's a wally figurine with the wally thing it's because the wally figurine isn't approved through sensi through the license correct is that yeah. correct yeah yes okay. so they were saying like we can only have very specific aspects of each of the Disney groupings that we're allowed to use within our compliance license. If we go outside of that, we're out of compliance. So even yeah. if I have Ariel and we are licensed to have Ariel, if I put something else, like if we don't have a licensing for flounder, then technically mm -hmm. I'm out of compliance if I put a flounder figurine in with Ariel. It's now, so okay. I also want to bring up one thing. When you're creating a flyer, and I'm and I'm part of the Canva Sensi uh, group now as one of the moderators there. And I am. Let me just tell you, I'm paying attention to all of your guys's flyers. Okay, when you are creating something, you have to put the words "independent Sensi consultant." I don't care what else you put on it. I don't care if it's the logo. Okay. It has to have this. And if you don't understand what is considered compliant and not compliant for logos, just type the words independent sensei consultant. Don't worry about which logo to use, guys. Literally just write the words independent sensei consultant. You will never be out of compliance. Um, I have tried really, really hard to be nice, but like there's been a few people just in the last, since I took on this role with you guys that um, 
y'all aren't putting on there. And I'm like, I thought that was like a given, like everybody knew you were supposed to do that. I realize you, you, we don't. So I'm going to tell you when you create something, just write the words independent sensory consultant and it doesn't have to be big guys. I did one. Um, there was some images somebody gave me because she's like, I, I need the, to say independent sensory consultant. I made it. And so it was size two in Canva. Okay. They were, it was so tiny, but it's there. I mean, you got to blow it up. Okay. To see it, but it, as long as it is there, it's fine. And I do know the tricks of using transparency on Canva. So I know where to look. So you don't, so people don't see it. And I, guys, just put the words independent sensory consultant, whether it's a picture you're taking of your own stuff, or it's a picture you're taking of like your neighbor has it and stuff like that. And you want to post it, guys, put it on. Like if you're creating, if you create a flyer of anything and it's not marketing from Sensi, you need to have the words independent Sensi consultant. I wanted to just throw that in there because I hate being mean. I really, really hate being mean. I'm good at it, but I hate it. So, all right, what other questions do you guys got? You're welcome, Danielle. Um, one thing that people have been asking about, um, and Priscilla brought it up, I think, um, is people got really confused when Sensi released that image for the Harvest Collection and it had Harry Potter mixed in with the Harvest Collection. And I even um, was like, wow, that's crazy because they tell us not to do that. But because they've released it all under the umbrella of Harvest Collection, they were, and it was pre-approved with Warner Brothers for the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, yes. they were allowed to do that. So yes. that, and they submitted that but it's only for those specific marketing images. So they submitted that to Warner Brothers. Warner Brothers approved it and they were able to use it. Cool. Um, but so that those are allowed because it's under the same Harvest Collection bundle, if that makes yes. sense. Um, so, but if they were- if But we you can't put Harry, that, you can't wonder. put a Harry Potter nine and three quarter train in with, you know, uh, the cut it out mini warmer. You can't do that in the same flyer because it's not been approved by yeah by Warner Brothers. But yeah. be the images that and the images that were created by by Sensi have been approved by Warner Brothers. Yeah. So. And that's where they already pre-approved them through them. So yes. that's why we're able to use that one. Otherwise, we can't just mesh stuff together. Even though they're in the Harvest Collection together and we have that, we can't just create our own input, um, you know, like you said, to cut it out or um, Paranormal Pumpkin in with Hedwig. You know, we can't, yes. we can't do that. Yes. No. Okay, one more about that. Yes. So if I was to take... And these aren't, well, Sven, he's a licensed product next Correct. to a wolf box. Is that, that's out of compliance? Correct. Out of compliance, yeah. Yep. I know, it's crazy. <laughs> it is because it's like, I'm, when you have the product, you want to show the product that you have, but it's like, now you have to be careful of which products when you take pictures. Cause I know for a fact, I've got, my girls all holding their own Cincy buddies, which now I got to go change one of my profile pictures because it's my children. And I took a picture of my children holding their own Cincy buddy. That's different. That's different. Okay. That is different. You are not using it as a flyer. No. Like, like if, you, if it's your profile picture and it's like your girls and they're holding their Cincy buddies and one has Finn and one has Pooh, and you're taking a picture and you could be like, oh my God, I love my girls. And, you know, or oh my God, my girls uh, got their favorite buddies. Like that is different because you're not making it a flyer. You're not, you're not using it to promote. You're just, you're showing your lifestyle. Your, your life is your girls and, you know, how they love Sensi and you love Sensi. That is different. That's considered a lifestyle. And that's where I say, like, 
you really got to really pay, like, think about it. Like if you go, if you have to go into, for example, you, you take that picture of your girls and that, and you go into Canva and you upload the picture and you erase the background and you write some words on it. That is considered a flyer, right? Okay. okay. You can't post that. That would be considered out of compliance. Okay. But if you just take a picture with your phone and you're like, selfie time girls, and they're holding up their buddies and you're, you know, and you're, and you use like hashtag sensi life, hashtag mom life. And you write the words, oh my gosh, I love the fact that I get to do my day to day with my girls and things like that. You're promoting being a mom. You're not promoting sensi. But it is your sensi that you're promoting because your girls have your sensi buddies. Does that make sense? Yes. Wait. So, okay. So, if you use it as a flyer, like as in, so what I'm getting is if I use it, if I take my picture and I crop it, whatever, and I put it in Canva and I put it in a flyer and I put it on my page, that's out of compliance. Correct. But what if, like I said, the one picture that I took and I'm like. So if you're holding, we'll go back to your Hufflepuff, right? Okay. So you're, you're sitting there and you're taking a picture and you're holding your coffee mug and you take a picture, like you take a picture of your coffee mug. Okay. okay. And you're taking a picture of your coffee mug. You're not taking a picture of the wax. And because let's say you have like. Hufflepuff and Ravenclaw and Gryffindor, like you have a couple and you're like, oh my gosh, it's wax changing day. Don't know what I'm going to do. Um, like, like, the, do you get what I'm saying? Like you're, j you're, or you're saying, oh my gosh, it's coffee. Like, thank God for my coffee first thing in the morning. And you have your wax behind it as in, it's just like, you're sitting at your desk and you have your, like, I'm holding my coffee and I'm like, and I take a picture and I'm like, oh my God, thank God for coffee at 930 at night. And you're showing the wax or whatever and stuff like that. You, that is completely different because you're talking about your coffee. You're not talking about the wax. You're not talking about all of that. That's okay, different. So by, so by saying, look what I got in clearance with the two, that's out of compliance because I'm talking about what I'm selling versus yes. your lifestyle. So if I was to have the Hogwarts castle, but I have my coffee mug in front of it and I'm like, how do you take your coffee? That's okay uh, because I'm talking about coffee. So it's all about verbiage with personal pictures as well. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Like a yeah. personal share is, is different than just in, like an advertisement. You know what I mean? Like it's just, a, it becomes a personal share, like a, a, a lifestyle. Okay. Okay. Oh, I'm, I think I'm getting on. better now. Thank you yeah. so much. Yeah. yeah. And that's honestly why I love talking about compliance because it's simple questions like that. You're like, oh, but I can do it this way. But having to know the difference in just a simple, ver literally it's, oh my gosh, you know, how do you take your coffee? I take mine black. Okay. But I have, you know, things going around. It would, that's literally the difference. Um, I have a question. So say like you have the Disney castle and your daughter or granddaughter's room is like Cinderella and you have the Disney castle sitting on her dresser and um, you have, you know, like, Cincy stuff in there, you know, like Disney Castle and stuff like that. Could you post something like, where are my Disney or where are my Cinderella no. fans or, or anything? No. You can. no. Even though you're not, I mean, if you're just taking a picture of her room or she, you can't do no. that. That's, you can't do you, anything. You can like take that. a, you can take a picture of her in her room with the warmer in the background and say, here's my princess or something like that. And yeah. But you can't in the say, background? where's my Disney fans? And then leave yeah. it like that. And then later on, post something about the Disney. Uh, the, you're going to, you know, the Disney cast was coming out or something. No. You can't. Technically, no, no you can't. Because I remember, I think it was, I remember now, it was a YouTube video I watched with um, 
I want to say Lauren Goslin, I think it was, and she was sharing, or somebody like that, they were sharing a picture, no, it wasn't her, it was somebody else, because they shared a picture of their daughter's room, like I was just, not with the Cinderella castle, this has been like last year, year before, and she was trying to talk about compliance, and she said that when she talked about compliance, um, she had Disney stuff in the background, and she took a picture, like, if there's a warmer that came out, she took a picture of the room and say like the Iron Man warmers there and he had an Iron Man poster and um, Black Panther on his bed from Cincy and stuff like that. But she never said anything that it was okay as long as you don't put any words or any stickers or any music or anything towards that. So best way to explain this, your girls, you take a picture of your daughter's Danielle, I will get to your question in just a second. Um, so best way to explain it, you're taking a video, okay? And actually this will go for Jen and her thing, okay? You take a video, right? And you're like, look at my daughter's room. Oh my gosh, it's in the princess mode. Uh, she's my little princess. Absolutely love it, right? And you put some music to the background of like, the Cinderella song, you know, music to it. Okay. And you were talking about it that way. You're talking about your daughter. You're talking about the princess. Yes. There can be a warmer there. There can be all kinds of princess, but you're talking about your daughter. You're not, you're talking about her room. Okay. You're not talking about the actual products. And that's why I, earlier when I said, you're going to see and hear from, you know, the top 5% where they do things wrong. And I love them. I love a lot of them dearly. And I, and I am so thankful when I get training from them, but when it comes to compliance, I am a stickler for the rules and the rule clearly states in black and white and on it's on page 21. You can't, and yeah, I'm that girl. Um, you cannot put you cannot say, where are my Disney fans? You can't say, where are my, my, you know, Wolverine fans? You can't say, where are my Black Panther fans? You can't do anything like that if you don't, A, already own it, or B, um, like, I, I don't know how to explain it better than that. Like, you can't do that. Just no, no that's what I'm saying. That. If you own the product and it's in the you brand, can't. But you, but you can't. Because we work for Cincy and we sell that product, it's like marketing. It's like me going and say, like, you're a part of my VIP page or you're a part of my business page. And it's like, oh my God, look at my son's room. He's a total. Um, Iron Man fan who here loves Iron Man or who here is an Iron Man that's fan. different and then that they is on different. that the warmer is coming out of the vault but is that you, you cannot clients? when you went Not out of compliance on the same post the rule is <laughs> that's what I wanted to find out the rule is if you are talking about your son's Iron Man bedroom yeah. And you're saying, oh my gosh, my son's a huge Iron Man fan. I just heard some great news. Um, or, you know, that would be considered out of compliance. Okay. okay. But if you say in a lifestyle post on your Facebook group, on your business page, and you said, oh my gosh, look at, look at the number one Iron Man fan in his bedroom. He is so excited about his bedroom. And there is a warmer there that is different because you're talking about your son. You're not talking about Sensi. Now, if in the comments, somebody says, oh my gosh, I wish we had Iron Man or we, I wish Spider-Man or whatever the, you know, whatever the room's about. And you're sitting yeah. there and it's a comments, you my advice to you, and I want you to take this with all the love in the world, my advice to you is take it to a private message. Okay. okay. You can say, oh my gosh, I got some great news for you. But my favorite thing, and you can see it on my business page. I do it all the time. I'll be like, oh my gosh, I got great news. Let me message you. Then 
one, okay, one, by saying, let me message you, people are going, wait, I want to know what's going on. And you're sparking interest, okay? Then you can do a one-to-one -one sale, okay? Okay, but what I, I was saying, though, if I'm not going to, if I'm not, you know, like you just said about talking about the number one fan, your son and all that, that was one post. And then I start seeing a lot of people comment, like you said, private message them, which I would do. But I'm just saying, say later on that evening or the next day or a week later when the product does come out, then I take one of the marketing flyers that Cincy provides and post, oh my God, look what just came out. That has totally something not to do with what I posted earlier two weeks ago about my son's bedroom and that Correct. he's being an Iron Man. But you're fan, using correct? a market, but you're, you just said it. You're using a marketing flyer created by Sensi. That is different than. Yeah, that's what my question was. As long as I can make a post building up excitement or see that way I know who to reach out to when the product does come available. I'm not really. Yeah, that's that. totally fine. That, well, okay, that is fine because you're not. Sure. Yeah, you're not showing a Sensi product and then saying who where Promoting you know it. what i mean yeah yeah mm -hmm. okay and so, so like, that's fine to like do. it was in a vault and it's going to come out maybe three weeks ago three weeks after i posted my video on my grandson's room or maybe it's coming out in october then mm -hmm. in october i wouldn't put my son's room again i would just post the marketing flyer from cincy it's like yep. oh my god look what just came out of the vault yeah look what just came out of the vault and i'm so getting it for my son's room that you okay. already showed so you can tie it into that that's totally okay. fine mm -hmm. okay. yeah but like isabel has a princess room and she has a cinderella warmer i can't go you know take a picture of that with all the cinderella stuff in the background and say where are all my cinderella fans at like that's out of compliance okay okay yeah yeah and so also people are asking in the um chat about um about posting like let's say you're going live with your disney product and you have a disney movie going in the background that is out of compliance you can't have disney music in the background you can't have a disney movie in the background even you know that's completely out of compliance so you can't do that also that's out of um if you're going live you can't do that anyways facebook will um delete your video because yeah they'll put you in facebook jail yeah that's licensing trust me from someone who ends up there a lot you can't do that um uh yeah you don't own the licensing for the background music or the movie at all we don't have any licensing for that even though we have licensing with disney we don't have it for the music we don't have it for the movies so we can't do that um yeah yes and they're asking more about that um it uh also applies for the graphics from the stories and so that's another thing that kind of um, when you have a graphic, especially a marketing image, you have to be really careful. I was told you can't have any stickers. You can't have anything like that. Correct. But if you, if you're posting something, let's say in your stories and you want to write something about it, it cannot be touching. So if you're, Correct. you have a graphic, you have to write out whatever you want. You cannot create, you can't create an image with the writing on there. That's not allowed. You have to post the graphic and then separately below it, you can type out what you want to say. Like, let's say you want to post um, Alice in Wonderland warmer, right? If you have the marketing image front or a personal picture, it doesn't matter. If it's in your stories, you can't take, go into Canva and type anything over top of that. You can post that and then you can go into the little type feature in your stories and you can say, Oh my God, look at this awesome Alice in Wonderland warmer. But then when you post the, the words, you have to move it away from the graphic so that they're not touching, just so you know. And you cannot put any music to that at all. Um, does that all still apply? Yes, that's so what that applies. You can't put any stickers. Like let's say you can't do a sticker that has Alice and the Mad Hatter or anything flashing. You can't do anything like that. Um, Yeah, you could do that, Tammy. Like if you took them to the movie theater and you can say getting ready for that and you have your buddies, you just can't have the movie on the screen in the background. But you can say going to see Spider-Man with Spider-Man buddies and like in there, you just can't have Spider-Man movie in the background or a video of it or anything like that. Okay, I think that's everything. <laughs> yeah. um, actually, I had a question earlier. Um, yeah, Daniel. You were saying 
Um, it was basically because I know like the, the license stuff is so much different than the regular products. So like if you have a wax bar and like a laundry product, and you're just like, oh, I love this because it has my favorite scent in multiple products. Is that considered? Yes, you um, can do that. Okay. Yes. So is there like a compliance there like there would be for no license stuff or regular thing? No. Because here's my here's a perfect example. I posted it the other day in my my group, okay, in my Facebook group, and all it said was I literally was holding a picture like this, okay. So it's my two samples and a room spray because I have all of this in lemon verbena, and I literally took a picture and I was like, oh my gosh. I'm so upset. I can't get my lemon verbena anymore. Thank goodness I'm stocked on it. Okay. And I, I, I did that. So it's all, you know, somebody said, well, what are in the, the little spray bottles? And I was like, oh my gosh, it's my samples for lemon verbena and for, um, for all purpose cleaner and bathroom and this and that. And they're like, oh my gosh, I want to try it. And I was like, all right, I'll send you a sample. Okay. Because it kind it things come in different in different fragrance or the same fragrance will come in different products. So you can do that. Licensing yeah. is very strict with what we can what what we can take pictures of. But our regular day-to-day -day products. Yeah. Like how Shoot. we create the car kits and stuff like that. And we post a picture with a car bar yeah. and a wall fan diffuser and pods or whatever. That's totally fine to do. It's just where the licensing comes in is where. So, and also remember things, you guys, that sometimes we forget, like NFL is licensed. We always go Disney and Warner Brothers, but NFL is licensed. And we also have some weird ones. Like um, what was the dog with the um, real tree or whatever that was? Um, oh, camo. yeah thing that guy is licensed as well there's a lot of like really weird ones that we don't remember are licensed so remember like nfl is also considered licensed the hockey stuff is considered licensed it's not just disney so you gotta be careful with baseball. Those. we you know we have premier soccer coming out in no uh here in the next couple months that is licensed most people yeah. don't know that premier the premier soccer league is licensed so you have to be like super careful about that yeah. um those are licensed and we forget sometimes because it, we we automatically go oh disney is or marvel or you know warner yeah. brothers those are all we all know but um um uh, post a pic of like scooby with the music no you can't put any with the music in the background um like well you can say well the picture is not of actually like of any actual product like i know oh, like I, actual you, just scooby yeah like if if i find a picture of scooby and the gang on google and i take that picture and i post it on my stories and i've got the scooby-doo song playing in the background and i'm like guess what's coming monday i think is you that... can't say anything about sensi in that post is the only thing or even allude to it, that it's a sensi product correct you can you can like you could post that and be like say something like I love you. Oh my you God. can literally I post the image and like great way to do something like that, Priscilla. And I do this a lot. Okay. I, for Scooby-Doo specifically, I would do it in my story and I had the Scooby-Doo image and I had the music, right? Where are you? You know, that whole thing. And I, I no words, no words. Okay. Because I couldn't say Scooby-Doo's coming out on Monday. I could like people literally thought I was going insane. And I had I my customers started asking me what's going on. Like they were asking me in quite like behind the scenes. And that's how I said, this is what we have coming out. And then I could show my posts of, you know, of the marketing and stuff like that. But I had no words to it. I had nothing because it. You're, you're, wait, wait, hold on. You're muted. You're muted. You're muted. Unmute yourself. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay. Sorry. I've got my kids watching TV in the background. So I muted myself again. Um, but see, that was a big one for me because I'm sitting here and I'm literally watching everybody's stories. Cause that's usually how I post my stories is by seeing 
others post to their stories. And I know for a fact that that was one. And I was like, I don't know. So I'm glad that stories, you know, get removed after like 24, 24 hours. hours. Yeah. But I wasn't in that. I'm glad I asked because that was one of those ones that I was like, oh, okay. So like the meme of Scooby and Shaggy running and then the music was in the background and they're like coming soon. And Can't do so, it. Okay. Totally out of compliance. Uh, totally out of compliance. Okay. But I know. if it's they like didn't a, say so hard to figure it out. If they didn't say the words coming soon. If they just had Scooby Doo mm -hmm. meme with the music playing, totally fine. As soon as you add words to it, it became out of compliance. Yeah. Now, okay. if you wanted to take a picture of your kids watching Scooby Doo and be like, oh my God, what a great, like, put it in your story, right? Take a picture of the kids watching Scooby Doo. And you're like, oh my God, I remember growing up on Scooby Doo. Such an amazing cartoon just love my scooby-doo it you're showing your lifestyle you're showing a memory okay yeah. you have nothing to do sensi. with sensi okay yes yeah i great questions like seriously great questions i I'm, know because that's that's the parts where we get it's really hard to like figure out what is and then especially if you're seeing other people posting it and you're like and and to be fair, nobody trained me on compliance. Um, I didn't have an upline to train me on compliance. So at the very beginning, I was posting all kinds of shit, you know, like anything. I didn't know. I was, I was hyping over top of stuff. I was posting uh, music and flashing things all over it. Nobody ever told me that. I don't know how long I did that before I stumbled across information and was like, oh, hold on a second, you know, and so you, you learn. So and that's why we're here is because I'm learning along with you guys and it's constantly changing and we just kind of have to dig deep a few times and make mistakes until we figure it out, you know, but the less mistakes we can make, the less of a chance of us getting in, in trouble. Yes. And I want to <laughs> bring up one more thing about compliance, because I know we've talked a lot about flyers because that's really where a lot of people get in trouble for in compliance is flyers. The other thing I want to talk about real quick is pay to place. Oh yeah, you, that's a great thing. Yeah, to bring up. And I'm gonna be. I promise I'll keep it short. Okay. Pay. Hold on. Wait. Before we go, Jacqueline, what's your question? Go ahead and unmute, and then I'm gonna talk about pays. Pay to place. Unmute. 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 I can't hear you. Unmute. Okay. Sorry. So say like with the hocus focus stuff coming out, I have this shirt. So can I wear this shirt out and say something? about how I love Hocus Pocus or whatever, but not So say, you, I would wear that shirt. I would take a selfie and be like, oh my God, 30 days until the new movie comes out. How exciting is this? Nothing to do with Sensi, okay? You're talking about Hocus Pocus and the new movie coming out. And maybe you have, you know, some Scentsy in the background, right? Because your house is full of Scentsy. So you're taking a picture. Totally nothing to do with Scentsy. But it's it's called subliminal marketing when you have it in the background, but you don't talk about it. Okay. Okay. But because you're, what you're doing is you're talking about your shirt. You're talking about Hocus Pocus coming up. And so let's say you did that, right? And then let's say you did a meme a couple of days later where you're like, oh my God, I love Hocus Pocus. I ha was just watching the, the first Hocus Pocus to get me ready for September 30th. How exciting is this? And then let's say a couple of days before you're like, you, you take a Hocus Pocus flyer that's already created through marketing, right? Or you're like um, Monica and you find the old Hocus Pocus uh warmer that she just found and she takes a picture of it right erases the background because she already owns it okay and she takes it and she's like oh my gosh i'm so excited i got i i found my first hocus pocus warmer and i'm getting ready for the second one to, to launch we could all steal her post okay if she gave us permission does that make sense yes okay, okay. thank you 
Yes. All right. Back to my squirrely brain of pay to play. I actually wrote it down so I didn't forget what I wanted to talk about. So pay to play, guys. I'm gonna I think be Mindy has a question too. Oh, what what's the question? Uh Mindy, what's your question? Okay, sorry, I'm outside with my dog. So I it's have okay. a shirt. I had a shirt that I had made at like a business here in town, and it has the Sanderson sisters, just like their, you know, the top part that the way their hair is. And I had a saying put on that says, um, um, in a world full of basic witches, be a wax witch. Could I wear that shirt? Yes. yes. Okay, yes. Good. good. Okay, that's yes. all. Because I want, <laughs> I want that shirt, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> I'll have to like yeah. share it to the group. It was a really cute shirt. And I was like, oh, in a yes. world for, full of basic witches, be a wax witch. And then it's just the Sanderson sisters like hairdo on the top. It's super and that cute. is totally fine if you wanted to wear that shirt and take a picture in it. Okay, okay. because that is that is considered... It's considered out of compliance, but it's considered in compliance because you're not, you're not putting scentsy products. Okay. Because a wax can be candles. It can be beeswax. It could be all different kinds of wax. You're not specifically saying a scentsy wax witch. Does that make okay. sense? Yep. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yes, uh, Mona, Monica, you, you need to create your little image for us. All right, pay to plays. Let's get this over with. Stop what image? With you. Huh? What image did I do? You need to take a picture of the warmer you found so we can, so I can create, uh, uh, so I can create an, a flyer for us to be able to steal and use. Just like uh, my, my, my warmer. Yeah, your warmer. All right, pay to plays. Yes, you can play bingo. Straight up, not going to say anything else. You can play bingo. Okay? You can... You cannot charge them to play bingo. Meaning you can't charge them $5 to play bingo. But their prize can be a $25 bag. Okay? Because they have to be able to push yes and no, okay? If they don't want that prize, you can say, okay, not a problem, uh, you know, whatever. But you cannot charge them to be able to play the actual game, okay? That's number one. Number two, you cannot charge somebody more than 2% of the total cost of the bag that you're creating. Like, let's say I have a mystery bag. These are my mystery bags, okay? All non sensey stuff in here cannot be more, cut, cannot add up to more than 2% of the sensey products. Meaning, I cannot, if I have, a scent circle, a room spray, and two bars of wax. Okay, this is 12. Room sprays are eight, so there's 20. Here's 23. I cannot charge like $40 for this, okay? I can charge, you know, a, right around $27, $28 for this, okay? That is what you can charge. Um, pay to plays. I talked about pay to plays. I talked about mystery bags. Um, pay, honestly, guys, pay to plays. You can do, you can do, you can, if you're doing like for me, okay, I have two parties every month that are going. One is called my August party, right? That August party is the one that I give away the hostess credit. It's the mystery hostess one. So if I put in whoever is in there, right? So let's say it's, and I'm just pulling names off the list. Priscilla places an order, Crystal, Monica, Anne, Jen, and Danielle place an order 
uh, place orders into that August one, I would put all their names into a hat and I would draw it, okay? Now, it is not considered pay to play because I am not saying you have to spend X amount of dollars to get in the, to get into a drawing. You, I, all I would say would be like, hey, any orders under the August would constitute an entry into this month's drawing, okay? Because I'm not saying what the prize is. Does that make sense, guys? I can't say I'm going to give you my hostess credit for placing an order in my August thing. I'm just like, I'm not, I can't say that, but I can say if you place an order here, your name will go into a drawing for this month's order. And so that is not considered pay to play. Um, let's see. Uh, or I like to say something like, um, everybody who places an order gets a fun little message from me. It's not, yes. it's not out of compliance to message anybody, but that message will say, you know, for placing your order this month, you can have blah, 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 or I'm going to send you this or that. Um, yes. Because it's in a private message, but I can't post and say everybody who is placing an order this month gets a wax bar from me. You know, like it's, yeah. you have to be careful how you post things. You have to be, um, you have to say things without saying it sometimes. Yes. You can allude to things without. Oh, I am, I am a great eluder. I allude to so many crazy things. Just, you know, just because I can, I did not come out and say it. And I, if I have, if I have deniability, it, you know what, that is, that might be how you took it, but that's not what I, I was saying. I was saying blah, 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 blah. And it would keep me out of compliance. Eluding yeah. is okay. Saying it is not okay. Um, yeah, you can't say host a party this no, week and Priscilla, get a free warmer. No, you cannot say that. You cannot say host a party this week and get a free warmer. You cannot say that. You can say, I have an awesome special going on this month for all of my hostesses. If you want to know what that is, hit up my DMs or something yeah. like that. Yeah. So yes, plausible deniability and yes. Yes. That's all right. What you were just saying, um, I just want to ask. I know this isn't pertaining to a game, but this is something that has been on my mind a lot because I see it a lot. Yeah. Um, I see a lot of uppers and downers, and everyone in the whole realm of Sensi post. Um, because I guess you know they just want to get that PRV in or something, and they're like, place an order with me by such and such date, and you'll be in for a drawing for a prize. But they don't say what the prize is. Is that out of compliance because you're basically saying that that's how if you want to win something and yeah because they're saying like if you want to win something but if they put something like um if you want to place an order with me this month expect a fun message from me would that be considered yeah. in compliance that's in compliance yep yep okay. that, because you're not you're not like, saying anything okay because i've seen the other way so much and like i yeah. even was told to do that and i'm like i don't feel like that's right but okay thank you yeah, yeah exactly. I know it's complicated. And uh, like, let's say like, like my team often asks me like, how do I get my algorithm up? Like, you know, and I can say, you can say things like everybody who adds a person to my VIP group this month goes into my drawing because you're not requiring them to purchase anything. Um, you can say anybody who comments on my um, this or that post this month goes into a drawing at the end of the month because you're not pay to play is saying you are requiring that per person to spend money and you're excluding people from being able to do that now everybody can like a post or comment on a post so you're not excluding anybody from that if they want to be part of your drawing they can just comment on your post your this or that post that is okay to do so you can do that where there's no money requirement so you can't you can't tell people they have to purchase from you to get in your drawing they can add people to your group. They can comment, like, share your post, whatever, anything that's free to do, you can do. Um, but you just can't require people to place an order or spend money at all to be part of your drawings. You can privately. Now you can pass, message every single person in your VIP group and say, hey, every you know, if you place an order with me, I'm going to do a drawing for this nice warmer. You can do that one-on-one. -on -one. That's totally fine. 
Um, you just can't post it publicly. And, and VIP group is still considered public, by the way, even if it's set to private, you can't post it in your Which VIP is group. a, which I was going to, I'm going to be straight up honest, guys. Technically it is not. Okay. Yeah. Sensi says it is. Sensi is the one who says Facebook groups are considered public. Public forum. Yeah. Public forum. But according to the Direct Selling Association, and Sensi and I go round and round and round and round and round and round and round for the last two years about this, technically speaking, a Facebook group, as soon as I make it hidden and I make it private, and you can only be invited if I give you the opportunity to be invited, which means I have to physically give you the link, it is considered a private group. It's considered a... a not a so not a public forum, but Sensi and I go around and around and around and around. So, for the better way of explaining, just to appease Sensi and their weird way of looking at things, because they do have weird ways of looking at some things. Okay, just do not if, if it's in a Facebook group or if if the public can see it, do not. Do not write it. Does does that make sense? Like I hope yeah, that and, makes sense. And I think the only way, okay, so let's let's say that. Let's say um let's say you choose to post those things in your private VIP group where people really aren't going to see them. The only way you're going to get reported by that is if another consultant is in your VIP group and they report you because none of your customers are going to know that it's okay that's not okay to post that in a public forum. So just be hyper aware of who is in your VIP groups. Be careful who you add and know that if you're going to have consultants in there, which I do have them in mind for training purposes or my friends that like to borrow posts or whatever, people that I trust. But I know multiple people that have been turned into compliance for things like that um, because it's another consultant who is jealous of what you're posting and they just want to be an asshole. So just be aware of who is in your VIP group. Be careful who you add. Um, and those are the people that are going to get you turned into compliance for things like that. So yeah. in my, in my opinion, you got to add that. Yes. In too. Yes. This is all in our opinion real quick. This in is all opinion. part of, in my <laughs> opinion, this is not official Sensi news. Yes. <laughs> In our opinion, <laughs> be careful what you post. Um, <laughs> Are we done recording? Yeah, we're recording. Um, yeah, in the corner, you're recording. Um, yeah, and they're asking about um, if things... If things are, if we're giving away a free warmer for hosting at $350 and you post that, that is an official Sensi offer that is yes. available for anybody who hosts, then that is okay to post. Um, yeah. You just can't say anybody who hosts with me this month gets a free mini warmer on me if that's not a special offered by Sensi. Correct. And that's why we can't post things like um, on-hand product or things for discounts. Um, you have to post it for whatever Sensi listed at full price or whatever clearance price or whatever. Yes. You can't You can't post any specials because if I'm a consultant and you're a consultant and I have a crap ton of stock and I say, I'm selling these bars for $5, that is putting you at a disadvantage because you don't have that on hand and you can't sell it for $5. So since he does not want to make it unfair for everybody who can't keep a bunch of stock and discount it at crazy amount. Yes. So, And that's why you cannot use the words, you know, um, bundle sale. You can't say things like that. You can say you're having a cash and carry because it's can, not... I like to say YouTube. something like cleaning out my Sensi stash. You want to take a peek? Yep. Then if they're like, yeah, that's not saying I'm selling anything. That's not saying I have on-hand stock. That's just saying I'm cleaning out my Sensi stash. And I might be garbage or half used bar, whatever. They don't know. But when they contact me, I send them my you, me, who link. And then they can shop from that. And I can tell them it's $5 a bar or whatever I want to say to them um, because it's a one-on-one -on -one communication. I just can't post, hey, I have these bars for $5. I just have stored in my shop here. Anybody want these? That's You can't go live. You can't show your bars and say, oh, I, here's my Scooby-Doo bar. I have this on hand right now, guys. If you want to buy this from me, you can't do that. So that's out of compliance, just so you know. I think Jacqueline um, has a question. Yes, you can do a special at a vendor event. And Danielle, I'm going to answer your question real quick. And yes, you can do a special at a vendor event, but it cannot be like public. 
For example, you can't say buy three bars of wax for 12 bucks. Okay. You can't say that. You can say, you can write, you know, special, special pricing. You know, and you can you can write that at a at a vendor event. You could say special pricing and do it that way. Um, and then when they come up and say, "Oh, what's your special pricing?" You can talk about it that way. That's totally okay. Um, Jacqueline, I'm going to ask get to your question next, but I really want to hit on Danielle's question because that is a great way, a great question. So Danielle's question was: So with a game such as bingo, what would be best to advertise? that you want them to put, that you're playing a live game of bingo and how they can win. So two things. One, I have a great, I don't know how to explain it. I have a great system that I use for bingo, okay? Because it checks all of the boxes for Sensi and other um, compliance issues. And it also uh, checks off all the boxes for direct selling association. So I, what I do is I create a bingo sheet. Okay. And let's say you guys are all going to play and I say, okay, so step one is this is when our, our bingo is. Okay. And I shut, you know, I, I put the date and time of when it is. Then I say, okay, step two is let me know what your five products are okay because let's say crystals are going to be different than danielle's versus going to be different than Anne's versus you know jacqueline's okay so everybody gives me their five by a certain date okay then and what i do is i literally created a bingo sheet and it has the different products okay now the products i'm going to show the day of bingo instead of calling out b1 right I'm going to call out and I'm going to be like, all right, the first one, and I pull, you know, pull out the name and it says room spray. So I grabbed the room spray and I'm like, this is my favorite. It's poo poo spray. It covers up my dog's farts and my husband's and away it goes. Okay. So everybody who has it marks it off. Then when, you know, I, and so I do that on the actual day of the bingo, but my next step is I tell everybody, okay, do not forget to get, for you to be able to get an extra card, you have to, you know, message me, okay? Because I'm not telling them they have to buy something. I'm just telling them they have to message me for an extra card. And in that one-to-one, -one, I'll be like, hey, if you want an extra card, here's five different choices. And I give them my five different choices of what they want, what they can do to get an extra card. Okay. And it could be all kinds of stuff. I'm not asking them to pay for anything and saying, Hey, if you want an extra card, you got to give me 20 bucks. You got to buy 20 bucks. I'm not doing that. I just give them five things and they have a choice of what of the five things they want to do for that extra card, but it's in a one-to-one. -one, okay. And so the prizes at the end, I can say, this is your prize. Okay. And nobody knows what's in it. I know what's in it. Okay. And let's say Crystal's my winner. So I say, okay, Crystal. So you have a choice. You have prize A or prize B. Prize A is this mystery bag for $25 or this mystery bag for $30. She's getting a choice. She doesn't have to take any of it if she doesn't want to. She can say, nope, I'm good, okay? And that is still considered in compliance because you are not telling them they have to buy it. They can say, nope, I don't want either one. Maybe let's say the prize is bathroom cleaner or all-purpose cleaner. Let's say the, you know, they're, you don't, they don't know, you don't know. Okay. So my point is you can do it however you want when it comes to the prizes. You just can't tell what the cost is, how much it costs. You can't do any of that for the prizes. It has to be in a one-to-one. -one, okay. I hope that answered yeah. questions. 
Vanessa That's Rowe has a really, really great training video on how to do bingo live in compliance. Um, if you haven't watched that from her, she, she does the same thing. She shows bags and she'll say, this is, you know, maybe she'll have three bags. So she knows she's going to have three winners. She's going to do three rounds. Right. And she likes to pull a number, say the number. And then if she has something to talk about, she holds it up and says, okay, this is what a wax bar is. This has this many cubes. You know, it's made of uh, food grade paraffin wax. She talks about it real quick, pulls another number and then says it. And then she continues on with her spiel and she breaks it up into three different pieces. But then when she has a winner, she kind of holds up a bag and just doesn't show what's in it. She just says, you're my winner. I'm putting your name on this and putting it to the side. That's still within compliance because you're not showing the product. You're not showing what's in it. Um, and so you can you can do it like that. And I think the way she trains is also like you can get extra numbers. Like, let's say you invite a friend for every person that you invite, you get an extra number. So if you invite five people and they show up to bingo, you get five extra numbers. And so that's how she runs hers, because, again, it's not pay to play. You don't have to buy anything to get those numbers that you're just doing something that anybody can do uh, to get those numbers. And that's how you kind of keep it in compliance. Yes. All right, Jacqueline, what's your question, girl? Go ahead and unmute yourself. Okay, so if you're going live and you're showing whatever you're going live about and you have Scentsy products in the background, not necessarily licensed products, but just Scentsy products, I was told that you can have at least 10 items, but someone else said that they have to be like the same, of the same item. Okay, so the rule is, you can have a whatever you want in your background if you're going live for example me going live right now i have a bunch of sensi behind me okay let's be real i have a lot of sensi behind me okay because if i went like this you could see even more <laughs> okay so there isn't a rule on what you can put behind you when doing a live video Okay, because if you ever paid attention to some of these people that go live, they have more than 10. If you watch any of our end of the month lives, there are more than 10 in their pictures, in their live streams. Okay, there's no rule like that. People want you only to do 10 and they pick that number because honestly, and again, this is in my hashtag, as Ann said, hashtag IMHO, in my honest opinion, it's because they don't want you to look like you have stock. Now, I do my Sensi Buddies, and I, you know, this is what you don't see over here and over here and over there and everywhere else is um, you can't, you know, you can't see everything else in my in my office. What you see is my Sensi Buddies. And if anybody ever asked me, and I'm denying this, denying this, denying this to you all. So I trust you all with my heart and There's soul. Recording. Oh, turn off that recording. Turn off that recording. Ah, damn. <laughs> turn off I that recording. I asked a while ago, and y'all said, no, keep recording. No, we're turning off the recording. Stop recording. And get out of Facebook. <laughs> 